I, I'm uh, optimistic about this conversation with Philip Shaw, Senior Advisor at Goldstone Financial Group. Hi, Philip. Welcome back to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, John. Looking forward to it. Well, uh, talk to me about the markets. Good grief. Uh, the first quarter has been so good on all the indices, and today it's not. Yeah, anytime we have a run-up like that, you know, we're, we're still through today up about 9% on, you know, S&P, on NASDAQ, Dow's been doing very well. Anytime we have a run-up like that, we're going to see some of these pullbacks. So it's nothing that's all that concerning to me today, but we'll see where, where the year goes from here for sure. Well, some of our guests in the last week or so have said the pullback, if it's a correction, could be a few thousand points. Uh, is that plausible or possible too? Well, I'd tell you the same thing I'd tell anybody is none of us know the future um, and we don't know what could happen in the world. You know, if something negative happens, if there's a major world event, anything could happen. I don't see anything that's going to lead to uh, to a major crash of the stock market at this point. Um, that said, you know, we rarely see these things ahead of time. What I would tell you is best thing is to be prepared and understand where you stand in, in your life and in your investments and goals and time horizon and make sure that regardless of what happens, you're going to feel okay. Well, 5% wouldn't be a crash, but that would be a couple thousand points. So I suppose we're due for a little profit-taking or rearranging, and maybe that's a little bit of what we're seeing today anyway, huh? Yeah, and I'd say a lot of that's going to come from, you know, what the Fed decides to do, you know, this month, next, you know, uh, this month and in, and in June, the Fed's going to dictate a lot of what, what's happening with the market this year, to be sure. Um, I would not expect, uh, you know, a- anything too volatile. Again, 5% of the Dow is not a, not, a, not a huge move. Wouldn't surprise me at all. Well, I'll tell you what the Fed's going to do. There's going to be three corrections or changes this year. They'll drop 75 basis points by New Year's Eve. They'll come in June, October, and December. If I'm even close to right on that, what does that mean for the markets, would you say? So I, I, I fully agree with you. Um, that's the expectation. The Fed has been telegraphing this pretty well of what, what they're looking for. Um, if that happens, I, I don't think it's a major, major change to what the market's expecting today. You know, it'll, it'll still be good, but the market's starting to, to, you know, price that into things already. So a lot of the movement we have you know, the first quarter of this year, the last quarter of, of 2023, a lot of that is in expectation of the Fed reducing rates this year. Yeah. The, the biggest thing is going to be if they decide in June not to lower rates, not to make any changes, I, I would fully expect a correction in the market. A correction to the downside. Correct. And why would they not do it then? Why would they keep it where it is? Well, they're, you know, they're being very hesitant to, to start lowering rates. They're very concerned that inflation is going to be stickier than, than what they've, you know, expected it to be. You know, they're, they're aiming for 2%, and right now we're still at, you know, over a percent higher. We're at 3.2% year-over-year inflation. If that number doesn't start to come down, they're going to be, you know, uh, they're going to be hard-pressed to start reducing rates. They're going to feel very confident in, in, in keeping things but isn't there something, uh, artificial isn't the right word, maybe subjective isn't either, but, I mean, what's so magical about 2% versus 3%? It, it's, a, it's a line in the sand of where they've, where they've put this target. You know, it's interesting. So I was listening to uh, a former um, Chicago Fed chair a few years ago talking about the, the 2% goal on inflation um, when we were at essentially 0% inflation. And he said... One thing to remember is 2% is an average. So we've spent uh, a considerable portion of the last decade below 2% inflation. We're currently above 2% inflation. 2% is the target, but it's also an average. So I I don't know that we necessarily have to hit 2% for the Fed to start reducing rates, but they want to make sure we're at least trending in the right direction. Well, as much as I think... um people are concerned about their 401ks or uh, their retirement savings that are to some degree vested in equities. You know, they, they want to see the market stay strong. But um, maybe more important than that is inflation, the cost of just buying groceries and gas. Uh, evidently, that's what the Fed's telling us, right? Yeah, and that, that's a 
that's a big concern of the Fed. The Fed's mandate is not to keep the stock market is not to keep the stock market high. It's to keep full employment and it's to keep you know low or controlled inflation of of goods and services. So that's more so what they're focused on. Um, I will say one of the other things that keeping rates higher for longer does for the Fed is if we do have a recession, if we do have a major pullback in the economy, the Fed tends to reduce interest rates during a recession about two to two and a half percent. And it's a lot easier to do that from five than it is to do that from two. Sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, I have a question about that, though. Uh, stay right there. Uh, we're talking with Philip Shaw. He's a senior advisor at Goldstone Financial. Last week brought a little relief for people who want to purchase a home. Mortgage rates didn't fall, but at least they didn't go up. As of Wednesday, the average rate on the 30-year fixed rate mortgage was 6.93%, about the same as the week before. There will be plenty of opportunities to watch the total eclipse of the sun, even if you aren't in the direct path. The NASA broadcast of the total eclipse will stream on NASA Plus, air on NASA TV, and the agency's website. NASA will also host a watch party of the eclipse in Spanish on YouTube. If you're wondering why those chocolate Easter eggs were so expensive, you can blame it on the price of cocoa. Ghana and the Ivory Coast, two of the biggest cocoa producers in the world, have suffered catastrophic harvests. Cocoa prices on futures markets more than doubled this year. I'm Mark Huffman. Learn more at ConsumerAffairs.com. If you think about it, every rug in your house has a story. Often when Ben and Carolyn from Executive Carpet Cleaning arrive at a customer's home to pick up a rug for cleaning, they hear that story. They say it's one of the best parts of the job. Executive Carpet Cleaning knows that that rug means something to you. It's why when they clean your rug, they pay great close attention to every detail. Executive Carpet Cleaning inspects every rug first. They determine then the best method for cleaning it, either running it through their new state-of-the-art rug cleaning machinery, dry cleaning your rug, hand washing your rug, whatever it takes to get your, uh, to uh, provide your rug with a thorough but gentle cleaning while preserving its quality and value. And right now, Executive Carpet Cleaning is giving you 15% off every rug cleaning job and free pickup and delivery. Call Kelly or Liz, 630-990-8600. Call 630-990-8600 or schedule online at WGNclean.com. WGNclean.com for executive carpet cleaning. The rug cleaning company that cares. It's 1251 on the Wintrust Business Lunch. A few more minutes then with Philip Shaw, Senior Advisor at Goldstone Financial. Uh, by the way, Philip, you just made a point before the break there about how at least one former Fed chair said it's easier to come down from 5%, say. Um, was that uh, interest rates or inflation that they were talking about? They were talking about uh, interest rates. So typically when the economy goes into recession and, and you see a, a, a spike of unemployment, one of the biggest levers the Fed has, really the, the only one they have, is, is reducing rates. So typically when you see a recession, they tend to reduce rates about 2 to 2.5%. Two um, which, you know, as of a few years ago, wasn't even really possible for them. Right. As we had next to 0% interest rates. Right. So I think the Fed feels a lot more comfortable, you know, being able to control for that, sitting where they do today, as well as the economy's been doing. What's the number they're at now? What's the interest rate that they're talking about? What's that baseline? Uh, where they're going to end? No, we, well, or where, the, where they are now. I mean, what, what's the... What is the Fed's quote unquote interest rate right now? Is it five and five and a quarter? Yeah, five and a quarter right now. Yeah. Um, Just talk to me about costs. Um, Can you talk a little bit about food costs or housing costs? What are some of the numbers that are important out there right now? Yeah, food and housing have been two of the biggest biggest contributors to inflation uh, for the day to day consumer. I saw a, a staggering statistic of the amount of people that were doing delivery food and not able to afford it in doing a buy now, pay later method to handle delivery food, which was surprising to me. It's the biggest advice I have for anybody who's really feeling the pinch of of inflation and how expensive everything is, is to be careful about all the little fees you're paying for. 
if if groceries have gotten out of hand, make sure you're doing the shopping yourself. Make sure you're paying attention to, you know, what brand or what the unit cost is of the things that you're buying. And don't do delivery. Don't go out to eat if it's been expensive. Don't do uh, carry or takeout. You know, these things get really expensive. And especially for people that are putting on a credit card or people that are doing a buy now, pay later financing for it, you'd be surprised how much more expensive that became. What's keeping inflation high, or as high as it is anyway? It's down, but it's not down enough. Is it services? Is it production costs of physical items? What's driving this? Uh, the biggest thing have been energy and housing costs. So, you know, cost of gasoline at the pump and the cost of, of housing more than anything else is, you know, we're still seeing with low inventory out there, we're seeing record high housing prices. Um, it is a good time or a better time to be a, to be a renter for a lot of folks because we have seen rent, rental prices coming down, you know, apartment rentals and the like, um, but especially housing right now. Because of the low inventory, we're still seeing record high prices, and the cost of finance is right up there with it. Yeah. So the cost of housing has been one of the biggest contributors. But for people who have a, say, lease that's not renewing anytime soon or a mortgage that they were able to get into before interest rates went up, um, some of those inflationary costs don't affect them, right? Yeah, you're correct. Uh, I tell everybody, inflation is personal to you. I know people that have experienced considerably higher inflation because their expenses tend to involve more travel, more of the leisure activities, and I know people that have next to zero inflation because the majority of their cost was their mortgage, and the mortgage was fixed. So it's a very personal number to you. There are ways to make higher interest rates work in your favor, you say. Like what? So while we have these higher interest rates, if you have extra savings, make sure you're not just putting in a checking account, not just putting in a savings account. It's really easy to go out Put your money into a high-yield money market, which is a liquid account available to you whenever. You can put it into a CD and lock in interest rates for a period of time. You can buy treasuries from the federal government. But you can make about 5 5.5% because between, you know, between the vehicles and, and who you're talking to. And 5 5.5% 5 on, on savings is really helping you offset that inflation number. That's uh, higher than the inflation rate for sure, although the difference isn't that great, but it's better than 0.1%, which some savings accounts were getting not that long ago. And in fact, we had a guest on the other day from Bankrate who said there's almost a dozen different lending uh, banks out there which have now savings accounts. You've got to find them, but are paying 4 or 5%. I was surprised to hear that. It's been a really great opportunity for savers. But more than anything is, you know, you always want to take a step back, look at your financial situation, assess and evaluate where you stand, see if you can pay off uh, high interest rate debt, because that's only getting worse. See if there's things you can put to work in your savings, and just do an evaluation for yourself. Talk to a professional if you need to, but evaluate and say, where do I stand? Are there ways I can do better? Philip Shaw is a professional senior advisor at Goldstone Financial Group, goldstonefinancialgroup.com. Hey, Philip, nice to talk to you today. Thanks for your thoughts. Thanks again for having me. WGN Radio News.